Hey, this is Mr. A, and I want to do a quick lesson on physical and chemical properties and changes. These are all the ideas that were communicated in Chapter 15, Section 2 of your textbook. I'm going to start with physical and chemical properties, and then I'm going to go to physical and chemical changes. They're all kind of related, so pay attention. Physical properties is any property like size, shape, color, or viscosity which can be observed without changing the substance. So in your book they showed a picture of a tennis ball and you could describe that tennis ball as this yellow round fuzzy thing and you can describe it without changing the tennis ball. It's just sitting there and you can see what it is and you can communicate to someone those physical properties. Um, you were able to uh, describe to me some of the things that you were using in your in your water filter, like the what the difference is between gravel and sand. So physical properties, I think, is something that's very tangible, and I think it's easy for you to understand. Chemical properties. Now that's a little bit different. The chemical properties is the potential for a substance to undergo a chemical change. Now that's a yeah, that's using a lot of big words, but it's the potential. So we know that flammability is one of examples of of a chemical property. Here's the thing about something catching on fire. You don't really know that it's going to catch on fire until you catch it on fire, right? Gasoline is just sitting there. It has the potential to catch on fire. Its chemical property is that, is that it will if you ignite it. So you actually have to change. In order to observe that property, it has to undergo a change. So that's why it is the potential for a substance to undergo. Uh, a couple of other examples that are going to be important. Reactivity. Reactivity is like when you uh, put metal sodium in water and it explodes. Metal sodium just sitting there is not going to explode, but it has the potential that if you put it in water it will explode. And also radioactivity. That's when something goes nuclear, right? That's when the atom splits. That when, that's when the, when the uranium atom splits and divides into two other substances. Uh, but it doesn't do that. Automat I mean, it does do that by itself automatically, but you, radioactivity is, is a chemical property. It has the potential to split. It doesn't always do it while you're sitting there looking at it, but it has the potential uh, to, to do that. And that's why it is a, radioactive is a chemical property. Let's move on to physical and chemical changes. A physical change is any change in the physical properties of a substance without changing the substance into something else. Hmm, what does that mean? Well, like if you were to take a nail and get it really, really hot, you've changed the color of that nail from being the gray thing that it is to maybe a glowing red. But you know what? It's still a nail. So you've witnessed the color change, but you haven't changed the substance. Or when something goes through a state change, like when you melt ice into liquid water. You've gone from a liquid state, uh, from, a, from a solid ice, the solid ice state into the liquid state. It's still water, it's just ice and then it's liquid water, but it's still water. So you, you, uh, you've changed the physical properties of it, you've changed the viscosity of the water. It was, um, it's, now it's running all over the place, right? Um, but it's still water. Hmm. Let me think about something else. One of my favorite uh, examples to use is the pane of glass in the windows. It's a pane of glass, and then if you break the glass and it's a pile of shards right then, well, you've changed the physical properties. You've changed its size and shape. It was a window pane of glass, and now it's a pile of glass. Little, it's a rubble. Of, it's all the little pieces of glass now that are in a pile. So you've changed the, the size and shape of the glass, but it's still glass after you've broken it. Now let's look at a chemical change. A chemical change is a change from one substance into another. Usually this is a chemical reaction and usually it is a reaction that cannot be reversed. We do have reversible chemical reactions, but I want you to think of it as, as you start with the reactants and you end up with products. All right. um, some examples I was using in the classroom was like Mentos and, so and soda. You put the Mento tablets in the soda. And then there's a vigorous reaction that takes place. Um, the other one is like uh, eggs rotting. You can't unrot an egg, can you? Or uh, 
a, a log burning and what you're left with at the end of this chemical change is a pile of ash and all the smoke that went up. So those are examples of an irreversible chemical reaction. There's a chemical change. You've changed from one substance to another. In a physical change, the identity of the substance remains the same. Let me say that again. In a physical change, the identity of the substance remains the same. In a chemical change, you now have a new substance. So if you took Mentos plus soda, you have some new yucky kind of liquid plus all the fizzy gas that results. Now here's the important thing about physical change and chemical change. Regardless of whether it's a physical change or a chemical change, Mass has to be conserved. So whatever you started with, you must finish with. So in a physical change, if it's like the window, you started out with all the glass in the window. If you, then if you broke the window and you swept up all the parts of the window that were, that were broken and you weighed them, the mass of the window that you started with would be equal to the mass of all the glass shards that you end up with. Likewise, in a chemical reaction, if you weighed the Mentos and then the soda before, and then you weighed the new liquid afterwards, and the fizzy gas that results, that's really the hard part, capturing all that gas and then weighing it, right? But it has to obey the law of the conservation of, of mass. And whatever you start with is what you have to end with, okay? Maybe another way that seems like most of my kids remember what the law of the conservation is ma of mass is, is I get all dramatic and I say, we are not God. We cannot create or destroy matter. Matter just doesn't simply appear and it doesn't disappear. In a chemical reaction, we have to account for all the mass that we start with and what we, that we end with. So that's going to be really important when we start working more quantitatively with chemical equations. They have to balance. Whatever we start with is what we have to end with. I hope that was a helpful lesson on physical and chemical properties and changes.